Once upon a time, once upon a time, God could contain creativity and love no more. God's heart opened and all that is was created and God's vision for creation was that creation would find delight in itself, joy gratitude, wonder. God's vision was that differences would be the cause for curiosity and interest and beauty. God delighted in the creatures of the sea and the creatures of the land and the air and the dancing stars and the pregnant clouds, as Seth prayed this morning, and planets. And God named creation, say it with me, good. And it was good. And it is good. Always good. But in that goodness, and isn't there always a but, in that goodness, humans began to do what humans seem to be heck-bent on doing. Humans began to focus on comparing themselves to each other, and they began to focus on anxieties, and they began to focus on not enoughness, and they began to think of all sorts of ways that they should put up walls between themselves and among themselves to contain their anxiety for that which was meant to be good people lost sight of abundance, and people lost sight of color and variety, and they began to compare themselves to one another. And in their comparing, they began to feel like somehow they were getting less than they should, and the anxiety, in their anxiety, they began to do what we also seem to be heck-bent on doing, which is they began to create rules about who should have access to abundance and who should not have access to abundance. And so there were created elaborate rules based on made-up categories of worthiness. And in that making up of categories of worthiness, the land began to be viewed as an object to be subdued and used for the good of some, And people began to be viewed as objects to be used for the good of some. And wars and violence and hatred and barriers came to stand for what it means to be civilized after all. But into that world, into that beleaguered world, a child was born, and that child that was born was an outsider, someone outside of the seemliness rules of his day. He was a poor Jewish baby born in a manger in an occupied territory, and the child grew and was nurtured by community, much like the people we named on this day. I pray you feel our prayers with you. Jesus loved and he taught and he helped those who gathered around him to remember who they were. Jesus helped his followers to remember that they are children, P.S. so are you, they were children of a wildly creative God and they are and we are beloved and trusted we are with the power of love. Jesus knew that there is no more volatile and no more powerful force on earth than love that calls people in all of their diversity to join together to create and embody and live hope together. So rather than step back from that love, that soul force, Jesus invited his disciples to step into power together in community, and he taught them that love never forgets, 
and love never ends. Jesus taught them that even if he wasn't physically present with them, the power of God's love would always be with them through the power of the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the always pulsing, sustaining power that is God's intention for creation forevermore and always. So you and I, we are carriers of that promise, and we are birthers of hope, you and I, and we are enlarged by our willingness to be people who are great with the power of the life that is hope and possibility. So the question we get to live every day of our lives, you and I, is this. Do we believe in the promises of God? Do we believe what God has given us? Do we believe it? It's a stupidly simple question, right? And it's not a one-dimensional, one-and-done question. It is a living whole of our lives question. Will we live as those who are carriers of possibility and promise? So to set the story of Pentecost, it is important to know this. The disciples on that long-ago Pentecost were gathered together in the midst of a partying city. There was a huge party going on around them. There were people who had come in from around the region to celebrate the Jewish feast of Pentecost, which was a time for giving thanks to God for the gift of the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai, and it was a time to celebrate Thanksgiving. Did you hear that motif in the in the anthem earlier? The Thanksgiving? Sorry, I'm a musician. It just went that way. They gathered together to ask the Lord's blessing on the harvest. So in the middle of that party going on around them, it's important for us to know that the disciples were huddled together in a barricaded room. They were terrified with Jesus gone and no lammy to hold on to by the neck or otherwise, right? The disciples didn't know who they were anymore. Have you felt that loss? Maybe when your mother died, who are you now? Or when a parent or when a child leaves you and goes to college or off into their lives, who are we now without the person we thought defined our lives? We have these moments. You know what the disciples were feeling. And what they were also feeling was they didn't know where they fit anymore. In the middle of a busy, busy world, they felt keenly their otherness and the danger of being others, so they hid themselves away from the life around them, but God would not leave them alone and frightened. The wind of the Holy Spirit came into the room where they were hiding, and here's what happened. When the Feast of Pentecost came, the disciples were all together in one place. And without warning, there was a strong wind, gale force, and no one knew where that wind had come from. It filled the whole building, and then like a wildfire... The Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Now, there were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. And when they heard the sound of that great wind, they came on the run. And then when they heard one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't, for the life of them, figure out what was going on, and they kept asking, aren't these all Galileans? 
How come we're hearing them talk in our own mother tongues? You see what was happening? These total strangers whom they had never met before, whose language they didn't understand, suddenly they could understand the utterances of others. Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They are speaking in our own languages, describing God's mighty works. And their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, and they said to each other, what's going on here? And others joked, ah, they're, dr they're just drunk on cheap wine. And then Peter stood up, backed by the other 11, and Peter spoke out with bold urgency, fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people are not drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Come on, that's funny. <laughs> this, though, is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. And here's the prophecy. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind, every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy. Also your daughters, your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. And when the time comes, I will pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they will prophesy. I will set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help to me, to God, will be saved. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. So once upon a time, God created a world in which all creatures knew themselves to be connected. Listen, on Friday night... Our granddaughter, Kit Vance, was born. Yeah. Thank you. And soon, any minute now, another granddaughter is going to be born, like today or tomorrow. She's due, she was due a week ago. I'm telling you, baby bonanza. So it's no small question for my heart. And I hope for all of our hearts on this day when we celebrate the music and the witness of children, what do we want for our grandchildren? What do we want for our children? Don't we want a world in which all people know that they are pregnant with promise and hope and beauty? Don't we want a world in which people take the time to listen to each other, not talk at each other or try to manipulate each other to get what they need no matter how subtle they might be about it but actually see and listen and behold and attend and honor and reverence and know together that until all of us are free and fed none of us are free and fed amen how is it that we beloveds in Christ, will give birth to this vision God has given us. It's not just Benjamin Netanyahu's job. And it's not just Kim Norton's job. And it's not just the bishop's job. And it's not just the president's job. And it's not just the pastor's job. And it's not just the teacher's job. And it's not just the fill in the blank, whoever you are, that you want to give all your power away to and say that it's their job. It is, in fact, your job. It is our 
job. We are those long ago disciples who are sometimes, come on, we have to admit it, we're sometimes inclined to give away our power and hide away rather than know that flames are dancing on our heads and they are dancing in our hearts. And we, every day we are given to live, we are bearers of light and love and we are pregnant with promise. So we must listen to black lives. We must listen to indigenous lives and Palestinian lives and Israeli lives and to our own lives and to the life of the ocean and the life of the soil and the life of dogs and chickens, right? We must listen to all of creation because it's not like there's humanity in the rest of the world. We are all in this together. Once upon a time, God created all that is in all of its diversity, and God called it good, and the Holy Spirit is in fact among us, binding us to that which is good, and there are flames dancing in our heads and our hearts and every day. Can you hear the rain? Every day is Pentecost. Every day day is Pentecost. You've got this. Thanks be to God for your witness. Amen.